I've had a couple of requests for a Canon T4i menu user guide, and so that's what this video is going to be. I'm just going to walk through the menu options on the Canon T4i and talk a little bit about what each of them mean. First, I want you to see that uh, the items across the top, I just have a couple of menu options or pages as we should call them across the top. I'm going to switch to P mode uh, in the creative basic modes or creative modes. Um, and you can see that we now have a lot more options. The, uh, the touch screen is um, uh, enabled and active right now, but I'm gonna mostly use the buttons just to keep my fingers out of the way as we walk through this video. So starting on the first page, we have our image quality. This is also reached through the Q button. You can also set your image quality through Q. This is where you can take, choose whether you want raw, JPEG, um, and the size of the JPEGs and things of that sort. Memory cards are cheap these days, and I would not recommend shooting at a smaller size um, just because you're trying to save money. A uh, 16 gigabyte card is under $20, so that gives you lots of space. So that's raw. Beep. This simply means when you focus the camera in autofocus mode, whether or not it will beep when you have active focus. Release shutter without card. If you don't have a card in here, and this is off, it, you press the shutter button, it won't do anything at all. If this is set to on, it will take a picture. It will, it will um, show you that picture, but it will not save it. That picture just sits in the buffer just long enough to uh, review that, and then it uh, gets rid of it, does not save it. And as I was just talking about reviewing images, this is image review. This is how long the picture you just took stays on the screen. You can turn it off to save battery life if you want um, and pretend you're taking pictures with a film camera. You have to wait till you get home to develop them. Um, or you can set it for two, four, eight seconds or it will hold on the screen until you half press the shutter button to turn it back off or if you set the camera down until um, the power auto off is turned. If you're doing time-lapse photography, turn this to off. Otherwise, I think two or four seconds is a good option. Lens aberration correction. So this is where the camera is smart enough to know what lenses you have on there and whether or not you should correct for peripheral illumination. This is kind of a darkening around the edge of the picture, mostly in the corners, um, and for chromatic aberration. And I don't see any reason why you shouldn't enable that for both of them, both of those options. Red eye reduction is the highly annoying feature where the camera flashes a bunch of uh, bright flash pulses in your subject's eyes right before you take the picture in the hopes of shrinking their pupils down because it is large pupils that give that bright red uh, flash or red eye look. I, I have this disabled um, and I also mostly use an external flash which gets rid of red eye. Uh, I'll talk more about red eye in, in a future time but I turn this off and you can easily correct red eye in post. Flash control allows you to set um, how you want the on onboard flash to, to fire and also allows it to communicate with an external flash. Remember the Canon T4i has um, really nice wireless flash control um, and, fla and uh, that is useful. All right, so we're going to go to the next page. Your exposure compensation, um, and this is where you hold down the AV... Sorry, I went to the next page. Uh, this is where you use the dial to set your exposure compensation. Um, or you can, this is where you can ask it to bracket and take three pictures at variety of uh, exposure levels. That's great if you're going to come back to your computer and do an HDR. Auto lighting optimizer, that's where it tries to do some helpful stuff. Let's call it stuff where it brings, um, it saves some of the data out of the highlights and brings up your shadows to make images a little bit less contrasty and a little bit smoother. If you are someone who wants to shoot on auto and get decent pictures, it's something worth turning on. If you're exploring more of the manual side of things, you should turn it off. And in fact, they have a really nice feature that says, if I turn into manual mode, automatically turn this auto exposure off because it does mess a little bit with your exposure system. Custom white balance, that's pretty straightforward. That allows you to pick a picture that you've taken 
um, and use that to set your custom white balance. That would be if you had an 18% gray card and you took a picture of that, uh, would let you do that. White balance shift bracket. This is getting in some kind of higher level stuff that if you want to know more about, talk to me, we'll talk about it. Color space, you should leave that on sRGB. There are some people that argue otherwise, but it's a pretty small set. Picture style, this is where you can go in and really tweak your contrast, your colors, your saturation, um, and auto is pretty good. In fact, most of the time I shoot in RAW, about 99.9% .9 of the time I shoot in RAW, and picture styles do not um, have any effect when you shoot in RAW. But if you want to shoot in JPEG, um, you can certainly do that. Uh, and then you might want to explore some of these different picture styles. Info will give you detailed information about any one of the picture styles. Sharpness, the further left the little marker is, the less sharp, the further right, the more sharp. And this is everything happening in the camera. So you can see on auto, sharpness is just a little bit down. Everything else is set on default. Get back here in menu. Let's look. Um, you can see monochrome, and then you can define several of your own. So that's all in there as well. Let's go back to metering mode. There are a variety of different ways where you can ask the camera to look at the scene you're pointing it at and decide what is the best exposure. We got our um, center weighted right there, or sorry, evaluative metering kind of takes into account the whole scene. Partial metering is a little bit more um, center weighted. And then we have spot metering. Wherever you're pointing that spot, it's going to have the most weight. And then center weighted average. So again, most of the time, most of you are going to be leaving on this. Occasionally, I use spot metering, especially if I'm taking pictures of folks, uh, of people, and I really want their skin tones to be properly metered. I'm going to be pointing it right at their faces um, to get my metering and see what, what kind of exposure the camera is suggesting. Dust delete data, if you start to see when you're shooting at really um, small apertures, you might see some uh, dust that's on your sensor, and this will allow you to go in there and um, map that and have the camera automatically deal with it. Probably not something you're going to need with. The T4i has auto sensor cleaning technology built in, uh, but, th but that's there. Setting your maximum auto ISO is pretty handy if you use auto ISO. This is basically limiting the upper range of the ISO with the camera. And 6400 is a little high. Those pictures are pretty grainy. If you're just going to be sharing them on Facebook, 6400 is probably fine. If you really want to make nice size prints, you might want to think about, and using auto ISO, you might want to think about limiting your ISO maximum to 1600 or 3200. Let's just put it on 1600. Long exposure noise reduction. So this is when you take longer exposures, um, we're talking several seconds or more, the camera can do some uh, noise reduction on there. One second or longer. Noise reduction applied to images exposed at one second or longer. Auto or just on. Auto means it's only going to happen one second or longer and it's going to do its job. On means it's going to be on with all of those images. Uh, useful if you're taking longer exposure images. And then high ISO speed noise reduction. So when you're shooting up around 1600, 3200, especially 6400, you can have the camera do a little bit of extra work and try to reduce that. Notice that it's not available in RAW because again, the camera really doesn't touch the RAW files. That's why they're called RAW. They just is what hits the sensor, is captured and given to you, and then you do the post-processing. But if you're shooting in JPEG, this does have an effect. It also just slows down your buffer speed of the camera because it's got to do more work, uh, or I should say your frames per second and fills your buffer up faster um, because the camera has to do more work through here. So um, I'm just going to leave that on standard. So live view shooting allows you to push this button when you are in still and not in video to uh, turn live view on. The autofocus method that is being used during live view shooting, whether or not your continuous autofocus is working. So this is really in kind of the video live view mode on this page here. Um, and this is where if you have live view on and the, the lens is set to autofocus, this is where it's constantly trying to keep your subject in focus and um, can be quite annoying if you don't want that to happen. Touch shutter, that allows you very much like the iPhone setting 
to actually touch the shutter, uh, sorry, touch the screen to have the shutter fire. I have found this to be really annoying um, and not at all what I want. Uh, but there are some examples where it could be useful. Macro photography, where the camera's on a tripod, your subject isn't moving, um, and you touch, it, it will get focus. Once it achieves focus, it'll take the picture. So that's how it works. Grid display is simply putting that nice kind of rule of thirds composition on the screen, or you can have a tic-tac-toe, and that kind of helps you compose. Remember, you want to um, your, your major lines in the image you want to correspond with those and eyes and, and faces and things of that sort you want to put on intersection points. So that's avoiding centering everything exactly um, and it gives you a more pleasing composition. You can even do kind of a graph paper grid. That might be a little bit too much to see, but that's all when live view is on. Your aspect ratio, your standard is 3-2, but you can do a 4-3 or you can do a 16-9 or you can take square shots if they're going to go straight to Instagram. You might like to do that, being a little silly there. Metering timer, that's how often it's trying to figure out what your exposure should be for the image. 16 seconds is the default, and I think that's fine. I don't think you need to make any changes to that. Now we're kind of into the playback um, settings, and that's why we're into the blue. So protecting images. I, this is not a feature I use a whole lot unless the iFi card is in. And I still don't use it through this menu system. I get to it again through Q. When you play back from an image, let me go to playback real quick, and you press Q, you have options. And one of those is to be able to protect the image right there. So one of the settings in an iFi card is to only beam that photo to your computer or online when you have uh, protected it. So this is a nice way. You take five shots, you review them on the camera. One of them is gorgeous, beautiful. You want to send it to folks right away. Protect that image, it will get beamed, and the rest will stay there. Or you can set up the iFi card to um, beam everything. So either way. Rotate images. Again, this is a lot of stuff that can be um, entered in through the Q menu when you're viewing an image. It's pretty self-explanatory. Erase images. I almost never use this um, and always just shoot, shoot, shoot. Uh, take those pictures out and put them on the computer and then reformat the card in the camera. Always reformat the card in the camera once your pictures are off and backed up safely. This allows um, the cleanest cards and this, this kind of most straightforward uh, way to avoid any errors. Erasing images either in small batches or groups is just kind of a waste of time and battery life and not a great way to do that. Print order, photo book, those are two things I've never used, but if you have a Canon compatible printer, you can print straight to it. You can choose how, what the order of those is, and you can even do this photo book setup, um, which I've never done. So I can't really say much about it, but it's there. Creative filters, again, through the Q menu, but this is where you can um, choose all kinds of different creative filters that, um, let's see, grainy black and white. So it should then apply, there it is. It just turned this picture to grainy black and white. And I can say high contrast or low contrast. And this is very similar to the Instagram um, when you're, and I'm not a big fan of this, not necessarily the results, but doing it all in camera. I would much rather take a raw shot, put it in my computer, and then I have lots of options um, to change that later. You can also resize here. So again, if you're using an iFi card um, or if you started to run out of space, but uh, I don't know. I don't really think that's a lot of worth it, a lot of your time on this. But that is definitely my opinion and you may find otherwise different. So the histogram display, when you are looking at an image, there's several different views you can have. You can have it fill the frame. You can have it fill the frame with a little bit of information about what shot number it is, shutter speed, aperture, um, where it is on the card, the number of images on the card. Pressing info again then gives you a lot more information and shows you this little histogram. I'll have another video that goes into depth and I'll probably ask the wonderful Christina from Christina Bernalis Photography to talk a little bit more about that. Um, She's a professional wedding photographer and can really give you an idea of what information is being shown to you here and how this is useful to tell whether or not your image um, has been exposed nicely.
So that's what that histogram can show you, but you can also go and get an RGB histogram as well. So that's there. Image jump. So when you're rotating the main dial, that's the dial up by the shutter button, you can ask it to jump 10 frames at a time. You have a bunch of other options here though as well. You can ask it to display only movies, jump from folder to folder. I have never used folders on cards, but it's there. Display stills only, display by image rating. Remember, you can rate images right in this camera, again, through the Q menu when you're playing back. Jump 100 images at a time, 10 is what it was on, or one. Then you put it on 10, use that dial to jump 10, and then use the um, touch screen to go through one at a time. So that's an option there as well. I'll leave it on that. Slideshow, you can ask it to play a slideshow. This is great when you have an HDMI out uh, plugged into here and you have it displaying on your nice big TV. So that's um, where that can be useful. You can just ask it to show a slideshow, show all of the images. And I think there is even background music. So if you put a music file on this card, you can have a slideshow that is playing to music and transitions and whether it repeats and how long it displays each one. That's all an option there. Let's go back though. In the rating I talked about, you can rate each image um, and just by up or down. So I just rated this image of this tree at night, two stars, and I can go to the next image and rate this blurry picture of a car, uh, five stars by going down or four. So those are options to you as well. Control over HDMI, now we're getting into uh, fancy stuff where you really want to talk about that if you're going to be doing a lot of video work with that with the Canon T4i, but that's nice as well. Now we're into what's called the setup. And if you've, if you've used other Canon cameras, even point and shoots, some of these menu items should look familiar. The wrenches for setups and the little camera icon for pictures and things of that sort. So I mentioned I've never used folders, but it's an option. You can set up folders on this card and write to them for uh, different things. It's an option. That's what I'll say about it. Never used it. File numbering continuous. So it, as you start, the very first picture you take with your camera starts at 0001. It goes all the way up to 9,999, and then it flips over and starts 001 again. Whether or not you want it to auto-rotate the pictures, if you've taken a portrait-style picture and then you rotate it back to landscape, it's going to rotate that so you don't have to cock your head like the RCA dog. Format card. This is an important feature that I use every time I put a card back into this camera. I format it. iFi settings. I mentioned using iFi cards. That's here under this first setup menu. You can enable it or disable it. You can go in and you can look at the connection info. It tells you what SSID that it's going to be connected to or more commonly called access point. Um, whether or not it's connected, what firmware you're on, what MAC address and things of that sort are there. So let's go back. All right. Now, um, second, we have the auto power off. How long before it turns off? I'll give you a little tip. I never use this switch to turn my camera on and off. I leave it on 90% of the time. If it's going to go in a bag and I know it's going to be in that bag for a car trip or a longer trip, then yes, I'll turn it off. But otherwise, I leave it on and let it go to sleep. There is no more power used when it does out or power off than when I do the switch. The only difference being to wake it up a half press of the shutter button. How bright do you want the LCD to be? Um, and that's an option here. If you're going to be shooting outside a lot, you can make it a lot brighter. If you're shooting indoors a lot and you want to save battery life, you can go um, lower. It's another one of those things where um, the middle seems to work just about all the time when you want the LCD to turn off, auto off, disable, so I, or enable. It's whether or not the um, LCD screen automatically goes off. I'm gonna leave that on disable for the rest of this. Time zone, what time zone are you in? It's pretty straightforward, you set that. The date and time, language you want, and video system. Screen color. I mentioned this way back when I first got my hands on the Canon T4i. There are other screens that you can choose um, that might be better for your eyes. And one of the ones that I think is useful, um, especially for a lot of nighttime photography, is screen color 5, where it's red. And that is going to be um, a lot less harsh to your eyes when you're taking pictures at night. Um, screen color 2 is pretty nice. I don't know how much any of these um, would affect battery life, if at all. Feature guide is more annoying than anything else. I um, disable that pretty quickly, 
but as a new person to a DSLR, it might be useful for you. This pops up a little bit of information for most menu items that you're touching, and that, um, for the most part, requires an extra touch to get beyond it, so I've disabled that. Touch control, whether or not you want the screen to be touch sensitive. The screen is now not touch sensitive because I've disabled it. Sensor cleaning, you could have it um, auto clean every time you turn the camera off. So I said I never really turn it off. I do every once in a while and that runs or you could actually clean now or you could have manual cleaning. The mirror is going to flip up out of the way for you. You take the lens off and you can do some cleaning there um, if you want. If you have uh, the little GPS unit plugged into this, you can get to the settings there. Certification logo display is just that. I've never clicked that before, but there you go. It's certified. There's those logos and they're being displayed. Custom functions. We're going to save that for another day because there's some, um, there's some more detailed talking I'd like to do about those. Uh, if you don't know about them yet, you probably aren't missing out on anything, but there are some useful features in there. Copyright information is actually really interesting. You can um, enter your name and that will be written into the metadata of every picture you take as the copyright owner. Does this mean for sure you have copyright and you can sue anybody who uses this picture anywhere in the world? Probably not, but it's a nice first step towards that. Um, so, and copyright details. I think this is where you can kind of say Creative Commons and things of that sort, or just use it as another text field uh, for information. And then if you have that information in, these other two options are gonna be available to you. Clear settings basically clears all of the settings on the camera and kind of reverts them back to stock default. I've had to do that every once in a while, not with a Canon T4i, but with my own camera a couple times. I've been fooling around, changed the setting, and then um, a couple days later I go to use something and it just doesn't seem to be working right. Clear all of the settings gets me back to where I was. The last option is the My Menu setting, and this is where you can pick from options on all of these other screens um, and, oops, um, and put them on this one. So you say register to my menu. Well, I turn beep on and off often, so I want that to be here. Um, I format my card often, as I said, so I want that to be here. So you just go through all of them um, in order, basically from each of the pages and I use the iFi card often, so I want that to be here. And you know what else is a, a review? I do a lot of time-lapse photography, so sometimes I want the um, review, image review to be here as well. So now that I've uh, registered those items to my menu, I go back, and here I am on my menu. It now says beep, format card, iFi settings, and image review. So those came from several different pages, and now they're all on one page on this last one, and that's my menu. So that's the menu system of the Canon T4i when you're in any of the creative zone modes on the dial. You have less options available to you when you're in the other modes of the dial, but I think they covered fairly well. If you have any questions about those or anything else about the Canon T4i or really any Canon Rebel, I'd be happy to answer them. You can leave a comment down below if you're shy. You can shoot me an email. There's also a link down there to use for buying off of Amazon. That helps keep these ads, uh, these videos, ad-free. Um, and it also allows me to set aside a little bit more time to work on these tutorials um, and things of that sort. So I really thank you for watching and please subscribe.